It's been a long time since I've been around Been a long time but I'm back in town And this time I'm not leaving without you And hey, 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 that's crazy man, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I got carried away I was getting all happy and stuff, Lady Gaga is all crazy doing her thing Anyway, this is for the June 11th fight between David Price and uh, Tom Dallas it's for the it's the BBBFC uh, heavyweight title eliminator, and I chose this fight uh, it's happening on June eleventh again because it's actually or what I think is uh, two of the possible heavyweight you know prospect perspectives coming up. You have David Price who's ten ten and zero with eight knockouts, and you have Tom Dallas who's fifteen and zero with eleven knockouts. Price eighty percent knockout ratio. Dallas with a 73% knockout ratio. So, looking at these guys, I'm going to break them both down, and I'll give my prediction. And uh, the winner of this, I'll do a prospect perspective on. Okay? Is that fair enough? All right. So we'll start off with David uh, David Price, who's 10 and 0 with eight knockouts, 80% knockout ratio, six foot eight, and uh, he's the three-time ABA champion. He's the bronze medalist in the 2008 Beijing Olympics. He's the main sparring partner for David Hay going into the Vladimir Klitschko fight. And there's nothing but really good things to say about him. The one thing you really like is uh, his weight range in all his fights has only been 4 pounds. He's either been 244 up to 248. And you really like to see that because that lets you know he's always coming in prime. There's no 20-pound weight gain, something to throw you off and make you think he's not doing what he should be doing in the ring. Uh, Five of ten have had winning. Five of his ten opponents have had winning records. It'll be six after this. Uh, two fights went the distance. He won every round on those scorecards. So you really have to like that. Uh, he has the extensive amateur career. Like I said, love his jab. He pumps it out. He hooks off of it. He, he leads in the combos. Everything he does is off that jab. And you really, really got to like that. It uh, looks very fit. He does keep the jab a little bit low, but he keeps distance with it, and that's what you want to see. Um, he double jabs it, he can turn it into the hook he's got a nice uh, right hand that sneaks in there, almost sneaky like and then you have his uh, uppercuts that he throws in and he leads, doesn't lead with the uppercut but he'll pop that jab, throw the hook and then next thing you know that uppercut fires right on through and it's a nice devastating punch he doesn't necessarily have one punch power but he does have the cumulative power he works the body very well works that in with his combinations. His hand speed is above par for heavyweight, well above par for heavyweight. Uh, he has nice timing in the counter-punching. You see that with the when he pops those left hooks out on people. Not a big inside fighter. Second somebody gets inside on him, he's quick to tie up. He doesn't really throw a lot of body punches or work once somebody gets inside him. I think he'll struggle with uh, the shorter fighters. Uh, really drops that left when he's throwing his right hand, though. And that he could be timed horribly on if he doesn't fix that. Um, he's very calm, he doesn't run, he fights his fight, he doesn't get flustered, very, very composed for only 10, 10 pro fights, but then again with that extensive amateur career, you've really got to like that. Now he crushed Butler in one round in his last fight, and that was probably one of the guys with the most experience that he has uh, faced, but he just absolutely blew him out of the water, it was crazy. Going over to Tom Dallas, who's 15-0 and 0 with the 11 knockouts, He's uh, six foot six. All these free heavyweights are huge, man. You don't see a whole lot of Tyson dudes out there. There's one guy out there. He's five foot or six foot two forty. I'll get to him later. Uh, he's another big heavyweight. Only three of his fifteen fights have been against opponents with winning records, and that's not good. Um, the fight with Zach Page, I believe he lost. I, I looked at that fight. He lost the sixth, seventh, and eighth rounds. To page. Uh, he appeared a bit slower in that fight. He, his hands were low. He was open to the jab. He is the tail, the epitome of two fighters. If plan A is working, which means the person isn't really throwing on him and he's allowed to fight his fight game, he's a very deadly fighter. He's, he becomes a fast starter. He fights inside. He looks really good. He moves well. His hand speed is excellent. If you take away that and you actually bring the fight to him, he becomes what Zach Page did to him, and that's the... Uh, occasional double jab with the combos he's open to counters he doesn't pull his hands back fast enough 
when he throws the punches, you know, he kind of leaves them out there a little too long, so he can be countered. He's flat-footed. He doesn't work the body enough. You know, he's open for the upper, uppercut. You know, and that's if you give him pressure and you take him out of his first fight. Again, I can only go off of the fights I see. His last fight was at Page. He looked horrible in. And, um, you know, some of the other fights I watched where the fighters really weren't putting up that big of a fight with him. They were kind of backing up and blocking and letting him do his thing. He really dominated him. He does very well with that. But what you want to see is how he deals with adversity. He looked gassed in that fight, so his question, you got to question his stamina because as it went into the later rounds, you know, I mean, he was in trouble. Had that went 10 rounds, maybe he wouldn't have made it. He definitely would have lost the fight. I, I still don't know how he beat Zach Page. I'm still throwing that out there. So... Going in this, looking at both fighters, if I was to pick a winner of this, I would be going with Price by unanimous decision, but I wouldn't be shocked if Price actually knocked him out in the later rounds, like the 8th or ninth round, 10th round, you know, like a Klitschko would, you know, take it 8 or 9, get him deep, and then do it. I think Price keeps his distance, I think he flusters him, it doesn't look like he's, uh, Dallas looks like he's more tailor-made to fight guys smaller than him as opposed to guys his size or bigger because it doesn't look like he deals with that length very well. And shorter guys can reach him and touch him. So that's what I'm going with, Price by UD. If I was a betting man, which you guys know I'm not, I might throw a little bit down on the knockout, you know what I'm saying? So hey, I hope you enjoyed this. This is Big Ragu. I'm out.